Russian propaganda, of course, was gleeful, hmm. uh, spreading this to, to those who oppose Ukraine in America, in particular, saying, come on, this is not a democracy. But, you know, two and a half years without having to do this. Before we continue, we invite you to follow our channel, the only American show reporting live from Ukraine every day. Let's check in with Joseph Lindsley in Ukraine. Joseph, how did the uh, marathon runner from Ukraine do here in Chicago yesterday? Hey, Bob, good afternoon from Lviv. Uh, I'm not sure what his time was or anything like that, but I know that Roman Kashper, a Ukrainian soldier who lost his leg in 2019, stepping on a landmine. Uh, and people forget, I think, that you know the, what Russia had invaded Ukraine in 2014, and so there was a war happening on a much smaller scale. So he was injured in 2019, and this was his fifth major marathon. I do know that he completed it. Uh, there was a great cheering section of Ukrainian Americans on Wacker Drive, and the uh, the fans were holding a giant banner of Saint Michael the Archangel, which is that symbol of Kiev and of Ukraine. And uh, so I know that Roman completed the course. And uh, as we speak of Ukrainian soldiers who've lost uh, arms and legs in battle, the our friends, the cultural forces who are currently traveling, uh, you know, their 64 day tour of the U.S. These are uh, Ukrainian soldier musicians. They're they're still in the Ukrainian military. Several of them were wounded uh, in battle, and they uh, they've been in the southeast. And they were down they're down in Orlando over the weekend. They played at a church, and a fire station, and at the uh, I think it was at a church. There was a uh, in Orlando the father of an American who was killed uh, fighting for Ukraine. Uh, the name of the American guy was uh, Edward Wilton, and his father was in attendance at this cultural forces uh, event in Orlando. And so the soldiers, the Ukrainian soldiers invited uh, the father of the fallen American uh, to give us to, to give a talk uh, at this church. And the report I heard is that the audience was in tears. Uh, the father gave this piercing account of what he heard from his son's friends of how his son died uh, in the battle, uh, in the battlefield. And so we see these great moments uh, of difficult but powerful connections and the Ukrainians also visited, the soldiers visited a uh, prosthetic center uh, in Orlando where Ukrainians who lost limbs are getting healed uh, using, you know, this sort of advanced American technology. Uh, and so it's great, to, you know, as we mm -hmm. see these, these sort of micro, micro connections as we go. And speaking of Americans who've been killed uh, in Ukraine, uh, over the weekend we had the news of an uh, American from Sonoma, California, Nick Duckworth, and he was a volunteer medic. And he was killed by Russian FPV drone uh, in, the Zaporizhia, in the Zaporizhia region. And according to the reports, he was killed while he was shielding a friend. Uh, you know, we, we, when one of those drones is locked on you, you know, hmm. unless you have some kind of good drone jamming equipment, it's really almost impossible to get away from it. It's an absolutely hmm. terrifying thing. And so he protected his friend. And as I was looking, uh, you know, I knew a lot of people who knew Nick Duckworth pretty well. And I was just looking up his name on, on X. And as far, you know, back in 2023, Russians, uh, Russians online were targeting him. I mean, they, the Russians do this all the time. As soon as they uh, find out that they're, you know, the name of an American uh, who's fighting or fighting for Ukraine, or even in the case of Nick, uh, here is a volunteer medic, they target these guys. <laughs> they, they put their photos online and they try to get them killed. And, and, and there's good evidence that there, there's a bounty you know, whatever Russian was piloting that FPV drone uh, to kill Nick du to kill Nick Duckworth likely received a, a prize uh, mm. for it. And so this is what is happening every almost every day now. Uh, of course, uh, you I'm sure heard the news over the weekend, Joseph, about the United States sending a missile defense system and troops to run it to Israel to aid uh, defense against Iran. Uh, when you heard this news, did, did it make you uh, think about uh, the support you're getting there and also at times the lack of support? Well, indeed. I mean, I, you know, this is because, you, you know, you, NATO countries will not put uh, personnel here. Uh, in Ukraine uh, at all. Even, so even for training purposes, Ukrainians have to go uh, abroad to do that. And, and, you know, Ukraine is, President Zelensky and others are still pleading for more uh, air defense as the winter approaches. And, you know, it's, it's felt deeply here because it's, it's, you know, it's, it's difficult. The, the manpower situation is not good. And we felt that here uh, over the weekend uh, throughout uh, Ukraine, the military recruitment officers, they're called the uh, territorial Recruitment um, Agency, the TASAKA, and, 
and they had major raids uh, throughout all of Ukraine uh, over the weekend. Uh, pretty extraordinary. I mean, they went to because you know so, now and then you'll have you know the, these military recruitment guys will pick people, you know, take guys from a village or something. But over the weekend, they went to the most popular rock, uh, the concert of the most pop- popular rock band uh, in Ukraine. They were waiting outside uh, to capture people to make sure. To, well, partly to make sure everyone who should be registered is registered, but they also were taking people away, taking them in vans. Uh, and it even got, I mean, t- we've never seen anything like this in the past two and a half years, but even hotels uh, were raided. And that, you know, for the first time in two and a half years, Ukraine was feeling like a police state, hmm. uh, which is something that Ukrainians really resist. I mean, in 2014, when Ukrainians had their revolution uh, of dignity, you know, one of the things they were doing was getting rid of the, you know, sort of uh, Kremlin controlled police state that existed here. There used to be a secret police force in 2014, and now that's gone. And for the first time since 2014, there was a feeling of secret police here. Uh, And even an American volunteer told me that the uh, military, these military recruitment officers and the police were banging on the door of his hotel room. And the girl at the front desk was calling uh, with, you know, her voice was shaking, saying, don't open the door. They're not allowed to do it. It's a violation of civil rights. But the fact that they would do this even in places where you have foreigners is pretty extraordinary. And there's a lot of debate today happening in Ukrainian society about this. You know, some people say it's good to remind people, you know, don't be at a club or a concert in a wartime. Uh, but others are saying, you know, this, we, we, this is not sustainable. It's not democratic and it needs to get fixed. So I'd say it was a very trying weekend here. And the Russian propaganda, of course, was gleeful hmm. uh, spreading this to, to those who oppose Ukraine in America in particular, saying, come on, this is not a democracy. But, you know, two and a half years without having to do this is pretty extraordinary. But it's forcing some very difficult questions. Uh, this week. Yeah, I can I can imagine. Joseph Lindsley in Ukraine. Well, I'm glad uh, many Chicagoans turned out to cheer on the Ukrainian marathoner yesterday, Joe. Always some bright moments in the darkness. <laughs> we hope. Thank you very much. Thank you for introducing Ukraine on your social media pages. That's very important that much more people can get more information about the situation here and how everybody can help Ukraine to stay stronger and to save all the world.